A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching. Main FCOM, QRH, and FCDM changes November 2022. The changes described in this document will be available in the operator's FCOM, QRH, FCTM manuals based on the operator's revision cycle. SOP Cockpit Preparation Parking Brake Effect on the Manual FCOM Update of the Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedure, Cockpit Preparation, Pedestal, Parking Brake Summary of the Modifications Replacement of the Sentence This action increases the brake cooling by the sentence, releasing the parking brake, prevents the critical structures from being exposed to high temperature levels for an extended time. However, if operational conditions dictate, e.g., slippery tarmac, the parking brake may remain applied. The effect of the parking brake position on the brake cooling rate is not significant. Therefore, the modified SOP highlights that the parking brake should be released if brakes are hot to prevent the following damage to the parking brake structure. When the brakes are hot and the parking brake is applied, the hydraulic fluid may be degraded inside the parking brake pistons, and this can generate a dragging brake effect. Auto rotation during the takeoff roll. Effect on the manual. FCTM. Update of the procedures, normal procedures, standard operating procedures, takeoff, tail strike avoidance. Summary of the modifications. Clarification of the factors that contribute to an early rotation to better identify an auto-rotation that may occur during the takeoff roll. No change to the associated technique to counteract the early rotation before VR. Engine ice shedding on ground. Effect on the manual. FCOM. Introduction of the procedures, supplementary procedures, adverse weather engine operations on ground in icing conditions. Update of procedures, normal procedures, standard operating procedures, Preliminary Cockpit Preparation Update of Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedures, After Start Update of Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedures, Descent Preparation Update of Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedures, After Landing Update of Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedures, Parking Summary of the Modifications the descriptions of the engine ice shedding on ground procedures in the normal procedures after start, after landing, parking sections are removed. The content is revised and relocated to a new engine ice shedding on ground procedure in the supplementary procedures adverse weather section. No modifications are included in terms of time, temperature, or engine acceleration limits. A dedicated link to the new procedure is added to the normal procedures, preliminary cockpit preparation and descent preparation. CAT 2, CAT 3 operations. Landing capability degradation below 10 feet without a cam. Effect on the manual. FCOM. Update of the procedure, normal procedures, standard operating procedures, approach, aircraft guidance management, approach, using LOC GS guidance. Management of degraded guidance. Summary of the modifications. In FCOM clarification of the condition to enter in the management of the degraded equipment, during CAT 2 CAT 3 approaches, the flight crew should consider the landing capability degradation below the approach category defined during the briefing. In addition, the structure of the procedure is updated without additional technical change. Altitude distance cross check. Effect on the manuals. FCOM. Update of the procedure, normal procedures, standard operating procedures, approach, aircraft guidance management, approach, using final app guidance. Initial, intermediate, final approach. Summary of the modifications, the check of the altitude distance in the final segment was historically included on approaches flown with final app to confirm that the vertical profile and guidance are in accordance with the chart. Erroneous profile computations by the FMS can occur, and a confirmation of the VDEV is not sufficient, as VDEV is based on the computed profile. In some procedures, as for example R&P are procedures with curved final or approaches where an altitude distance table is not detailed in the chart, this confirmation cannot be performed. On approaches flown with final app guidance mode, the check of the altitude when crossing the FAF and waypoints of the final, as published on the chart, is sufficient to ensure that the FMS vertical profile is well computed. On approaches flown with FLS function, 
a check of the altitude only at the FAF is sufficient, as there is only one segment, the FGS beam. Check of the barometric reference. Effect on the manual. FCOM. Update of the procedures, normal procedures, standard operating procedures, descent, EFIS CP. Summary of the modifications. The use of an erroneous barometric setting during a barometric referenced approach can affect the safety of the flight and may cause the aircraft to fly lower than the published approach path and result in a risk of controlled flight into terrain in poor visibility conditions. When cleared to an altitude, the flight crew should cross-check the barometric reference provided by the ATC with the barometric reference used for the approach preparation. As a reminder, the barometric reference used for the approach preparation that is set in the performance approach page is always a Q&H. For an altitude clearance in QFE, the flight crew should cross-check with the QFE of the ATIS. In the case of significant difference, the flight crew may suspect an error in the barometric reference. In this case, the flight crew should use all available means to confirm the barometric reference. Check of the barometric reference of the ATIS. Check of the meter TAF. Confirmation with ATC. Most of the events of a barometric reference value that is erroneous reported a difference of 10 hectopascals with the current barometric reference. However, the barometric reference provided by the ATC when cleared to an altitude, may be slightly different from the barometric reference of the ATIS, depending on the station used by the ATC. It does not always mean that there is a Q and H error. Therefore, Airbus does not provide any threshold of difference to detect a barometric reference error, and highlights that significant difference can be the symptom of a barometric reference error. The purpose of this SOP update is to enhance the flight crew's awareness of the fact that this type of barometric reference errors may occur and that vigilance is required to detect these errors. SOP Parking Parking Brake Release Effect on the Manual FGOM Update of the Procedures, Normal Procedures, Standard Operating Procedures, Parking, Parking Brake Summary of the Modifications Addition of a comment to highlight that the flight crew should not press the brake pedals before they release the parking brake after engine shutdown. This is to avoid the activation of the zero torque pressure, ZTP function. The zero torque pressure, ZTP function, puts the alternate pistons of the brakes almost in contact with the brake carbon discs. It prevents the loss of hydraulic fluid from the accumulator due to repeated brake applications. The function activates when the flight crew presses the brake pedals and only the yellow accumulator supplies the brakes, i.e. engines not running. As the pistons are kept near the carbon brake discs, even when the parking brake is not engaged, the high temperature of the brake is transferred to the pistons. This may cause an early degradation of the brake pistons due to the heat transferred from the carbon brake discs. FMS Arrival Page Update of the Management of the VIS Effect on the Manual FCOM Update of the Aircraft Systems 22 Auto Flight Flight Management Controls and Indicators MCDU Page Description, FMS2 Honeywell Arrival Pages Applicability Applicable to aircraft equipped with the Honeywell FMS Release 2, Standard H3 and Standard H4. Summary of the Modifications For aircraft equipped with the FMS Honeywell Release 2 H3, the flight crew can select on the Approach VIS page VIS that are not compatible with the STAR, but are compatible with the selected approach. All VIS appear by alphabetical order on the MCDU. For aircraft with the FMS Honeywell Release 2 H4, the flight crew can still select on the Approach VIS page VIS that are not compatible with the STAR. The MCDU displays the VIS not compatible with the STAR below the other APR VIS subtitle on the MCDU. FMS Transition from Cruise Phase to Descent Phase Effect on the Manual FCOM Update of the Aircraft Systems 22. AFS. Flight Management System, Flight Planning. Vertical Functions, General, Flight Phases. Applicability. Applicable to aircraft equipped with the standard Honeywell FMS Release 2H3. Summary of the Modifications. Revision of the table that describes the transitions of flight phases. The conditions of the transition from the cruise phase to the descent phase are updated. There is no transition of flight phases from the cruise to the descent phase 
if the flight crew selects an altitude target that the FMS considers as a step. QRH or alignment in a TT mode procedure. Effect on the manual. FGOM. Update of the procedures, abnormal and emergency procedures. NAV QRH or alignment in a TT mode. QRH. Update of abnormal and emergency procedures. NAV or alignment in a TT mode. Applicability. Applicable to aircraft equipped with the TUS-2 function. Mod 162,728 MPP 20,485. And the standard Honeywell FMS Release 2H3. Honeywell FMS Release 2H5 is the corrective standard for aircraft equipped with TUS-2. Summary of the modifications. The QRH or alignment in a TT mode procedure is revised to request the deactivation of the TOSURV function on ground in the case of a dispatch with one or in a TT mode. The purpose of this change is to prevent possible cases of spurious TO runway too short alert during taxi or TO runway too short alert at takeoff. Preventing identified risks, PIR. Effect on the manual, FCTM. Removal of the preventing identified risks. Summary of the modifications. The FCTM is a techniques manual and not a training manual. Therefore, the preventing identified risks PIR section from the FCTM is removed. The use of PIR is considered as no longer required in the operational documentation. Some of the PIRs that were listed in this section are elements of basic training, basic knowledge of aircraft systems and their operation, and all are already included in the FCTM and or FCOM. Indeed, all the necessary actions to prevent these types of risks are already included in the FCTM and FCOM procedures and systems description section. In addition, the PIR section was not an exhaustive list of all the common operational risks reported in service, and some of them were no longer relevant or up-to-date. New reset procedure in the case of air engine abnormal pressure and air pack regulator fault ECAM cautions. Effect on the manuals. FCOM. Introduction of the new reset in procedures, abnormal and emergency procedures system reset. QRH. Introduction of the new reset in procedures, abnormal and emergency procedures system reset. Applicability. Applicable to a 320neo aircraft equipped with the IU Southwest 4.0 SESCP and 1803B05 FWC H2F10. Summary of the modifications. When one engine bleed is inoperative, the SESC sets the air flow demand to 120%. As a result, the EIU detects a difference between the current and the selected air flows. This triggers the air pack regulator fault alert. A reset procedure is therefore added in order to clear the air pack 2 1 regulator fault alert when this one is preceded by the air pack 1 2 regulator fault alert. This reset procedure is only allowed on ground. New temporary abnormal behaviors. Not expected early climb mode engagement after takeoff with QFE setting. Effect on the manual. FGOM. Introduction of the Aircraft Systems 22. AFS. Flight Management System. Temporary Abnormal Behaviors. Not expected early CLB mode engagement after takeoff with QFE setting. Applicability. Applicable to aircraft equipped with the standard Tailies FMS with QFE option. The future Tailies FMS S9 is the corrective standard. Summary of the modifications. With QFE setting for takeoff, during the takeoff roll, the FMS may modify the thrust reduction acceleration altitudes. As a result, the thrust reduction acceleration altitudes are lower than expected and may be set down to the airport altitude plus 400 feet. The tab provides the description of the abnormal behavior and the associated operational recommendations. New temporary abnormal behaviors. Loss of FMS predictions in low-density airports. Effect on the manual. FOM. Introduction of the Aircraft Systems 22. FS. Flight Management System. Temporary Abnormal Behaviors. FMS 2 Honeywell Temporary Abnormal Behaviors. Loss of FMS predictions in low density of airports. Applicability. Applicable to aircraft equipped with the minimum standard Honeywell FMS Release 2H3. The Honeywell FMS Release 2H5 is the corrective standard. Summary of the modifications. 
The FMS may encounter temporary and repetitive loss of predictions in the flight plan of the MCDU during flight. If the FMS finds only four airports in the navigation database within 1,200 nautical miles from the aircraft position, the occurrence rate increases when the flight crew enters a fifth airport on the 5L key of the closest airport's page. The loss of the time prediction for more than five minutes can trigger a FWD fuel transfer from the trim tank. To avoid new occurrences in flight, the operator should request the FMS supplier to modify the navigation database to increase the number of available airports on the flight routes affected by the loss of predictions. A minimum of five airports must be available within 1,200 nautical miles of all expected flight plans. New Temporary Abnormal Behaviors Erroneous Display of Active ATS ICO Code on the DCDU and MCDU Effect on the Manual FGOM Introduction of the Aircraft Systems 46 Information Systems Data Link Temporary Abnormal Behaviors Erroneous display of active ATS ICO code on the DCDU and MCDU. Applicability? Applicable to aircraft equipped with the standard ATSUC SB9. The ATSUC SB10 is the corrective standard. Summary of the modifications. The DCDU and the MCDU may display an erroneous active ATS ICO code after a transition from an European airspace toward the North Atlantic airspace. After the transfer from the first North Atlantic ATC center to the next ATC center along the aircraft's route, the display of the active ATS, DCDU and MCDU, is erroneous, and it continues to display the first North Atlantic ATC center. However, the CPDLC connection is correctly established with the second North Atlantic ATC center. The temporary abnormal behaviors provides the description of the abnormal behavior and the associated operational recommendations. A320, Mentor Channel.